Hey friends! In today's video, we are sharing six commonly made makeup mistakes that age you faster. And I'm super excited. As you can see, I have a very special guest sitting right next to me. This is Gabby. Hey guys. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to be here. I can't even tell you. It's like my dreams have come true. <laughs> Girl, you took the words out of my mouth. We were in Austin filming content together and this is just so much fun. I'm so happy that you could be on my channel. We're gonna be sharing mistakes that are common, you guys. I make them, I'm sure you've made them. Oh my gosh, I've made them so many times, it's actually kind of embarrassing. <laughs> so we're gonna share those mistakes, but we're also gonna share how to correct them. So if you're not familiar with Gabby, which I'm sure many of you are, she has a channel here on YouTube called Glam Girl Gabby and she is everything glam. She's a hairstylist, makeup artist. She shares tutorials, product reviews, Use hair tutorials. She creates incredible, informative content. I think you're really going to love her content if you love mine. So be sure to check her out after this. I'll have her info in the description box. You ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Today, we're going to be demonstrating all of these makeup mistakes on our own faces so you can see the difference that a few small technique changes can make. On the right side of our face, we're going to do our makeup the wrong mm -hmm. way. And on the other half of our face, we're going to do our makeup the right way. And then we're gonna compare the differences. Let's go. Makeup mistake number one starts with skin. It's not prepping the skin properly. I think this is a mistake that many of us make because it's just so easy to get focused on the makeup and the makeup products that you're using, but your makeup is only gonna look as good as your skin, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. Not prepping the skin is the number one mistake. If you take anything out of this video, it's take the time and take the tip to prep the skin. And that doesn't just mean the moisturizers and products that you're putting on immediately before makeup. It's the whole skincare routine the night before, the week before, especially if you have a big event, if it's a wedding, if you're the mother of a bride, you wanna make sure that you're exfoliating the skin. Exfoliating is so important because it helps remove that top layer of dead skin cells that prevent your skin from glowing. It also creates texture on the skin. So when you lay makeup on top of that texture, it can be really unflattering. So there are a few different ways that you can exfoliate. You want to share a few of them? Yeah. So there's the one that everyone thinks about and it's the physical exfoliation. So you can get a product like this one. This one's a Lumiere, the Lotus scrub. So you can actually see that there's granules in here. So it almost feels like a face wash, but there are some really heavy, chunky granules in here. And when those granules go on your warm, moist skin, it kind of sloughs off all of the dead skin right on the outside. So this is the way way that we always think about exfoliating, but it's not the only way to exfoliate. Absolutely. Another physical exfoliator that I want to share before we jump into the other is like a skincare tool and device. I love the Dermaflash. Are you familiar with the Dermaflash? No, okay. tell me. <laughs> it's essentially like shaving your face. You certainly don't need to purchase the Dermaflash for this. You can use, use little razors, but shaving your face also helps remove that top layer of dead skin cells oh, and yeah. derma planning. the peach fuzz and the hair. Yes. Because that can make your makeup look very unflattering. So you want to make sure yeah. that you're removing that and just exfoliating and removing that top layer of skin and hair before you apply your makeup. Yeah, that's something that I've noticed a lot in my clients as well. As we get older, we tend to get some more peach fuzz on the face. Hormonal changes make all of these wonderful oh, things happen. <laughs> we lose it on our hair so that we can gain it on our face. Oh my God, that's fair. What is up with that? <laughs> and the eyebrows too. We lose the eyebrows too. Never here on this face. has to be here. But when you're putting your foundation products on top of peach fuzz, you may not even notice the peach fuzz at all, but the foundation's going to sit on top of it. It's going to kind of float on top of the peach fuzz and it's never going to look as flawless and as perfect as it could. Okay. So that's an amazing tip. And I'm going to check out that product. Absolutely. You just want to get the skin nice and smooth before applying makeup. There's one other way that you can exfoliate the skin and that's using a chemical exfoliator, mm -hmm. which is basically a chemical that's going to help exfoliate the skin. And you can find this in many different acids. One of my favorite chemical exfoliators is by a brand called Biologique Research. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't tried that one either. I'm going to try it. It's called the P50 lotion and mm -hmm. it feels like a toner and consistency, very light lightweight and you apply it on clean skin. I have never had glowing. I mean, that is a product. You, you know, when you find products and you immediately notice a difference within just a few days. Yes. This is one of those products. I mean, within days, I felt like I had highlighter on my skin because it was just glowing just oh naturally. It's really beautiful. 
Okay, we're gonna leave links to every single product in the description box below. So if you guys are like trying to frantically take notes, don't stress because in every single video, there are links to every single product and they're all divided in their category. So we'll do an exfoliator category, a foundation category, all that stuff. And then you guys can find the links to these like hidden gem products that, I mean, I'm a beauty YouTuber and I didn't even know about that product. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, awesome. The next mistake that I see a lot of people making is using really heavy, very dense powder foundations on skin that has a little bit more texture, on skin that's a little bit more mature. Now, I understand the appeal of powder foundations for sure. It is so much faster. It is so much easier to apply. You can apply it on the go. It's not messy. It is very appealing. But if you choose the wrong powder foundation, the powder foundation that sits heavily on the skin, it's going to do all of the things you don't want it to do. It's going to emphasize your wrinkles. It's going to make your skin look crepey. One of the biggest tips that I can give when it comes to turning back the clock with makeup application, making someone look very, very youthful and very, very radiant is actually to use more luminous products. Okay. So one foundation that I really, really love on mature skin is the L'Oreal True Match Nude. It's a tinted serum. So it's a lighter coverage foundation that's very glowy and radiant. Maybelline has a version as well. That's amazing. If you want something more, high-end Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk is like a favorite amongst the beauty community. These foundations are light to medium coverage and they give you such a gorgeous glow. But I know what you guys are gonna say in the comment section. Gabby, I can't use light to medium coverage because of my age spots. I can't use light to medium coverage because I have more issues with coverage. Well, what you can do is you can use a more luminous radiant foundation and then you can spot correct your age spots. You can spot correct your melasma, your hyperpigmentation, all of the things that you're struggling with. So then you're using a concealer, which is denser, to only cover the areas that need the coverage instead of having this whole mask of really heavy full coverage powder foundation. Now, this is the thing, okay? There are so many things with makeup that ebb and flow and powder foundation isn't the be all end all evil of the foundation world for mature skin. Certain powder foundations can be amazing for mature skin. So I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about those full coverage, super matte, super drying ones. So Lisa, I know that you talk about powder foundations on your channel all the time. So can you tell us a little bit more about great powder foundations? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I recently filmed a video on like busting the myths about powder foundation, because just like you said, a lot of those myths, there's some validity behind them, right? Because heavy powders can accentuate texture. They can look really heavy. They can make the skin look really dry. Talc is an ingredient that is in a lot of heavy powder foundations, and that's kind of the culprit. So when you're looking for a powder foundation, mineral powders are really nice. I personally discovered and fell in love. I have a deep love. I, I mean, I just can't even talk about it without like, emphasizing. I love this brand and this product, the Jane Iredell Pure Pressed Mineral Powder Foundation. Yeah. Okay. Let me rewind. So in my teens, early twenties, Studio Fix by Mac all day, every day. It was, it was the staple. It was. It Everyone was. wore it. And when I reached about 32, 33, I was like, okay, it's not really looking that great on me. And I kind of, I kind of shunned off powder foundations for all of the reasons that you said. Yeah. About a year and a half ago, I stumbled into a store and I met the Jane Iredell rep and he was telling me all about this. And I was, and he was just so charming and so lovely. He could have sold me anything. <laughs> And so I took this home and I didn't have high expectations, but when I put this on with their primer and their setting spray, I was like, what in the world is this? Is this really powder? Like I'm like touching, I'm like, is this powder? Cause it did not look like powder. It looked yeah. luminous on the skin. This actually has light reflective properties. So it actually looks luminous on the skin and natural, absolutely beautiful. So if you are a lover of powder foundations yeah. or you're looking for one that is appropriate for skin in their forties, fifties, sixties, I have viewers in their seventies who have told me they love this. Yeah. Yeah. Give this one a try. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's a hybrid. It's like a hybrid between somehow it's a liquid, beautiful, luminous, finished foundation that's been morphed into a powder. It is magic. It yeah. really is. And what I love about it is you can get a variety of coverage. So if you apply it with a brush that's a little more dense, you can get full coverage. If you apply it with a fluffy, loose brush, you'll get a lighter kind of veil of coverage. So there's a lot of versatility with this one. So I had to give this a shout out in this topic because... You have to find the right one and there are a few, there are a few. Hopefully 
the market catches up and we get a lot more beautiful options for powder foundations. But this one is just a tried and true. Love that. So makeup mistake number three is one I am definitely guilty of making. And I think this is probably one of the most common. Yes. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is applying a concealer that is either too light or too heavy for you. So let's address the lightness first. I think we gravitate to a lighter concealer because we look in the mirror and we're like, oh, these are dark circles. I need to put something light on it. I always tell people it's like having a bruise and putting white pantyhose. You ain't fooling anybody, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You're gonna see a gray cast through that lightness. So it's really best to find concealers that have a little bit of a peach tone to them or they're deep enough to cover the darkness. You can always go in and brighten with a lighter concealer, but you wanna make sure you neutralize and conceal that darkness first and you're not gonna achieve that with a too light a concealer. You wanna talk about the consistency of the concealer? Yeah, so here's the thing with the consistency, okay, of the concealer. We also seem to have this thing where it's, I have terrible dark circles. Circles. I have really dark circles. So I want that concealer to be too light. And I want that concealer to be very thick. The thicker, the better, the more coverage. That's not true around the eyes. Okay. It can be true for sure for hyperpigmentation or for other things around the face, but around the eyes, we have a lot of movement right? We, ex we emote, we squint, we smile, we have a lot of movement. And when we have movement in the face and we have heat, our face is warm and you have something thick and creamy, that cream is going to migrate into divots or into little ridges, which means you're going to get very, very creasy, right? So when you get very, very creasy, what do you do? You powder the heck out of it. And then you end up with something super thick, super light, that's super powdered, and it is a recipe for disaster because then that powder dries it out and then it makes your under eyes look 20 years older. Oh, right. Like, I feel like you see texture you didn't even have before. hundred like, percent. I look better with no makeup. Yeah. I just did a makeup tutorial with no filter, no skin softening, filmed in 4K. Okay. This is the magnifying glass. I'm feeling very, all sorts of feelings right now, <laughs> posting this online. And I showed you guys, you know, how to do it the right way. And then I did all those mistakes on the other side. And then I showed you in natural light. And it's crazy. I really, it really brings out wrinkles that you don't even know you had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So one formula that I love for concealer over the age of 40 is the new Say Beauty Concealer. Yeah. This is the Slip Tint Concealer. It's a really lightweight, thin consistency. It just glides over the skin so beautifully and easily. It has a radiant finish. This is one that I would recommend day over day to anyone over the age 40. Have you tried this yet? I haven't tried that one. I try it. I've been, I've been hearing that it's so amazing. It really We're is. all going to go to Sephora later. Yeah, and it's going to go in your cart. It's going to go right into my cart. Another one that's really, I think similar, although I haven't tried this one, but the way that you're describing it is the house labs one. That's a good one. Yeah. I just discovered that one and I find it gives beautiful coverage without being too heavy or thick. It's creamy without being too creasy. It's, it's very, very good as well. So there are so many options you guys for concealers that are going to cover up your dark circles, but not do more harm than good. <laughs> and just to wrap this up, if you're someone that's been using the same concealer for 20 years, that's definitely a product that needs to evolve over time. So yeah. be a little adventurous, try other formulas. You might find one that's actually a better option for you today. Mistake number four is one that it's almost embarrassing that I'm saying this mistake. Too, I'm going to raise my hand right now. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. It was my number one hate comment for like two years. Oh. And it's brows that are too dark. Okay, too dark, specifically really dark on the inside. Okay, you do not want sharpie brows that looks like it's been stamped on the face. It has no powderiness to it, no strokiness to it. You know, it's just one blocky brow. That is just unbelievably unflattering on everyone. Definitely on me. Completely agree. So I have a funny story about this. I used to be a trainer for Matt Cosmetics. So I would like go in the region, I would train all the artists and I had my boss pulled me aside one time and they were like, I'm going to redo your brows for you. And she a very, in a nice, delicate way, basically told me that my brows needed to go because <laughs> it looked like I had stenciled them in, you know, yeah. I do think it was a look at the time, you know, just in my defense. <laughs> But a stronger brow can look too harsh and it can really age you and just make you look angry and harsh. I think it's all about creating softness in the features, yeah. especially as we age. And the brow is an easy place to go wrong. 
Totally. Something that I've really been enjoying lately is using a brow gel. Mm -hmm. So even using something, I looked down because I thought it was there, but it's not I there. I for you. So I have a brow gel for you. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. That's a good one. This That's one is so good. This one is so inexpensive, you guys. This is the e.l.f. I believe it's called the Brow The Wow Brow or Brow Wow. Yeah. Brow Wow. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is that it's a fibrous gel. So basically you're getting the gel, so you're getting the hair hold, but you're getting these tiny little hair fibers in the formula that's gonna bulk up your own brow. So if your brows are very thin, you're kind of getting some like faux hair. It's like the hair extension of the brow world. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I have to use that. I have to create the shape with a pencil and then go in with this to create like realistic looking hair and volume to the brows. Totally. And then that just fluffs it up. It really bulks it up. Another technique that I've been using on myself that I've really been enjoying is actually drawing individual hair strokes with a brow pen. So these are really tiny little tip pens. There's one by Melt Cosmetics that I just tried that's really fine and very, very nice. There's one by Glossier that I talk about all the time. So depending on your brow shape, like Lisa wants to sketch in her shape and then bulk it up with this. For me, because I have some more brow density, I can just gel them with the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Brow Freeze, and then I can go in and sketch hair-like strokes. So there are so many different techniques for brows now, and a stamped on brow, it's Got not it, it anymore. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. <laughs> Makeup mistake number five is all around blush placement. So this is a mistake that I made up until a few months ago, to be quite honest, because it's a mistake that I think you get in the habit of how you apply your makeup and you just continue to apply it that way for years, for decades. And that was me, okay? Me and too. our face changes as we age, you know? It really yeah. does. The, the facial structure changes, gravity takes in, and things start to kind of fall down a little bit. So we need to raise the placement of the blush. You don't want to apply it too far down on the face. You're just going to bring that attention to that area. I find for blush, I really like to lift the face. I like it to give me a youthful bit of color to the cheek, but also lift the cheekbone. So you want to make sure that you apply it. I like to use the apple of my cheek as a starting point, but then really blend up here to my cheekbone and even kind of blend up into my temple a little, depending on the color that I'm using. Me right. Too. That's exactly the same way I do it. And if you see the before and after, and we're going to pop up some before and afters, you guys, it's a drastic different. Like it's, it really makes the one side looks like it's been collapsed and the other side looks so youthful. It's incredible. Yeah. That makeup can do that. Absolutely. And I have been all about cream blushes over the last five years. They just light up the face and I really feel like they give a youthful glow to the skin. I love picking a shade that's kind of rosy or peachy pink, something to brighten the face. I think when we go with shades, that are too bronzy or dark yeah it can what can that do what do you feel like that does to the face when you yeah I think what happens with those bronzy tones is because it becomes like a contour tone it sinks so it recedes and instead of doing the thing that we want it to do which is the exact opposite we want it to lift so those dark tones cool bronzy tones especially you'll get a complete opposite effect of what you're wanting so many women sit in my chair and they say I don't like blush I don't want blush only bronzer and I'm telling you you're doing a disservice you don't have to use a ton of blush but you do want to bring a bit of that color onto the face especially up here on the cheekbone like you said absolutely and you can just use a little that's what I love about cream blushes is they can be really sheared out and manipulated to where there's a tint or you can build them up if you want more color so I have this one from tower 28 this one's really nice this is the shade office hours and it's just a really nice pinky rosy shade mistake number six. Oh, this this one hits the nerve because this one annoys a lot of people yeah. because they want it and they don't want to give it up right and it's hard to change mm -hmm. but it's using very very strong black liner all the way around the eyes mm -hmm. you know not a smoky eye not smudging and softening and diffusing but lining the eyes all the way around in a really harsh an aggressive way. I feel like this kind of lends into the same idea as the strong brow. It just makes everything look harsh, just a little too stark and harsh and heavy. Yes. Right? I personally love to use like a chocolate bronze eyeliner with a little bit of shimmer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because sh what shimmer does is it reflects light. So it doesn't, have, I'm not talking about glittery. It doesn't have to be glittery or metallic. It can be the most subtle sheen just so that when the light reflects off of your eyes and your eyeliner, it just gives a very soft, 
very youthful look around the eye. It's, it's this little trick that Shimmer plays on the eye by reflecting light. So I love shades like Urban Decay Bourbon. That's a really nice one. This one from NYX, this is their mechanical liner, and this is the shade Under the Moonstone, and it's a soft, pretty kind of taupey bronze with little shimmer. Yeah, when I'm having a natural makeup day, I wear that NYX liner, and it doesn't give like an over amount of definition, but it brings this sparkle and this light and brightness to the eyes. That's really amazing. One other little tip that I can kind of offer to you guys that doesn't necessarily work on every eye shape and every eye type, but works on a lot of them is to stretch your liner up in the corners. So if you have a very hooded deep set eye, if you have a lot of heaviness in here, it might be a little bit more difficult to do that. But if you don't, if you have a little bit more space, you can stretch and pull it up and out just a little bit. And that's gonna give you the illusion that your eyes are tilting up. It can be incredibly, incredibly flattering. That's a good one, absolutely. Okay, so those are our six makeup mistakes, but we were just talking, we have a bonus tip for you guys and it's yeah. around lips because we didn't really talk too much about lips yet. No, we you didn't. Share this one? Yeah. Okay. For those of you who watch my channel, you know that I have a love affair of lip liner. Like my lip liner and I, we have a deep love for one it's another. <laughs> There's a, it's complicated. <laughs> so when you are using lip products, okay, lip products are so important. So many people skip them. This is the thing. If you are using a matte lip product that is very nude, it can look, it, there was a time and place, there was a JLo era where it was very in and we actually used concealer. Did you use concealer? I never did. Oh. I, I knew it didn't look good on me from the start, but it was a trend. <laughs> it was a thing. I remember. It was a thing. And you know what it does is it wipes out your mouth and your mouth can actually make Make you look very very youthful so as we age we also lose our vermilion border okay so that kind of ridge around our mouth it kind of dissipates so if you use a beautiful lip liner a nice creamy lip liner and you recreate the vermilion border you fill it in with a color that has a little bit more richness it doesn't have to be bold doesn't have to be bright but it needs to have a bit of richness so it can be nude still but you know like a mauvey nude or a pinky nude something that has a little bit of pigment and then you add a little bit of gloss you're going to reverse the clock it's insane i've done this technique on women who are in their mid to late 70s and it is remarkable what a difference it makes to them it gives them that youthful mouth Totally. And that youthful mouth just tricks everyone into thinking that, you know, you're 10 or 20 years younger. I also think we show a lot of texture on the lips. I know I do. And I like a little bit of shine. It doesn't have to be a super heavy gloss, but if I'm going to use a matte lipstick, I want a little bit of more of a creamy matte formula, something that's just yeah. going to give me a little bit of a sheen to the lips so it doesn't accentuate all the lines that I have on my lips. But what, interesting enough, I find that really metallic lipsticks or glittery lipsticks look pretty harsh. Would you agree? Totally. Right? Frosted. Yes. Frosted is the word. <laughs> frosted is it's not good. It's not <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be nice. I know. I feel the same way. So I think it's all about giving the lips some fullness, some natural fullness with lining properly. Yeah. And then also a little bit of shine, whether that's just a creamier matte or it's a high shine gloss, just giving the lips some shine and some volume. Yeah. Always think about makeup, like highlights and contours. We're creating illusions on the face. So shine things bring forward it's a highlight so if you want something to look fuller you want to add a little bit of light and so that's why when you add that little bit of gloss your lips look so much fuller than if they were completely mattified and nuded out Totally. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you took away something from this video. If you did, let me know. Drop a comment down below. What was your takeaway? What you're going to change in your routine? Gabby, thank you for being on my channel. Oh my it's gosh. It's such an honor you. to have you. Thank you for having me. And thank you guys for listening to me and having me here. Isn't she lovely? You're, I'm telling you, you're going to go watch her <laughs> channel and you're going to get hooked. I'm just going to give you a little bit of love. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little. Her content is not only extremely informative, like you're gonna learn so much by watching her, but the quality of her videos, they're so engaging, they're so entertaining. You're gonna, I'm just warning you now, like you're gonna go down the rabbit hole. I hope you've cleared your schedule. <laughs> oh my God, you're so sweet. I'm gonna link her channel down below as well as her Instagram and all the places that you can find her. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye.